just funny. Oh my God, it's a three, two, one. Good evening. Are we good? Mm -hmm. Welcome to Incredible Tiny Homes. If anybody's out there watching, you never know. I feel I'm just talking to a cell phone, so it's uh, good to be back. Friday, we took a little video yesterday of, of what we were doing um, in the shop. I'm in the office, the state-of-the-art shop. I mean, look at this. You got re re reclaimed plywood on the wall, and um, I got all kinds of quarters and stuff under here. And here's my booklet for my solar. Here's my price list. Here's uh, antacid in case I. I have a homeowner screaming at me and I got some sunblock. Some sunblock for tomorrow. And then I gotta keep all my change. And this is Kiwi's little stuff that he gave me. I have to put that together because he won't think I respect them. See them little shop. This is incredible tiny homes, log cabin, tiny house. That was cool. That was a gift. Thank you for tuning in to Incredible Tiny Homes in my beautiful office. Outside radio is going. We're trying to finish up a house for Susan O. Susan O, how are you up in Arizona? We will be heading out for your house, heading to Arizona Sunday, okay? Sunday we'll be going your way. Tomorrow morning, me and Matt, I'm going to be going with Matt to Virginia to drop off Peggy's house. We're going to set it up, power, water, sewer, solar, satellite, you name it, and all kinds of everything else is going to be set up, ready to live in, and ready to rent, make kinds of money because she bought a house from us. Listen, you know what? Our prices, the only reason that people buy here, and it's awesome, and that's why I've, I've structured my company, is because of those prices right there, okay? Those prices. I built a house for $25,000, 16 foot long. I lived in a 16 foot long house. It's exactly what you need. One person, two persons. If you live in a tiny, let's go tiny. Tiny means tiny. Tiny is literally smaller than this room I'm sitting in. 25 grand, you can buy a house. 25. I just got on the computer. Look at my screen. This is a 35,000 inch screen. And it's tumbleweed. It's 62.9 between 20 and 26 foot. It's base price, $62.9. Wishbone's out of business over in North Carolina. Chattanooga Tiny Homes, Tennessee Tiny Homes. Uh, who else is out there? Uh, Heirloom, high-end tiny homes. Heirloom, come on, I'll build your same home. I'll build your same home for half your price. That's it. I don't know what else to say. And the reason is, you know how I can do it? You know why? Because I'm counting my pennies here. That's why. And you guys come into the workshops. Look here. You're coming to my workshop, and I love it. A $25,000 house, 16 foot, ready to go, ready to live in. You come to the workshop, you can get it built for $18,000 and it's six days. So you're saving yourself $8,000, $7,000? Yeah, seven grand. That's the labor that we would do. I pay out that in labor. We are cheap. Cheap, cheap, cheap. I'm not the Walmart. I'm the target of tiny homes. Walmart, they say, is cheap. You know what? We're built right here in the good old U.S. of A. I'm the American dream. American dream. Dusty road. Tiny dream. You know what I'm saying? We're the American dream. And I'm stupid. And I know. Backing like a fool on the, on the internet. And acting like crazy. But you know what? Tiny homes are so much fun. You guys are coming here because we got inexpensive prices. So I guess anybody that has these kind of prices is probably going to act stupid anyway. I could act refined like I did yesterday. I tried to put a nice suit coat on and a, and a pink shirt. And when I did, it still, still, it still came out, you know, that I was just a bovine. So I want to tell you, all right, I count pennies around here, all right, and nickels and dimes, right? But I want to tell you, you compare my prices. Who is Upper Valley Tiny Homes? He does financing. I've seen a little video on him. And I don't look anybody up. I swear to God. We just, five minutes here, boom, here you go. That's what I found. Upper Valley Tiny Homes. Go buy from him. It's great. You compare his houses with our houses, I'll beat them in quality and in design. You call me. You know what I want to do? I want to go take all my whole crew. We're going to get a bus, and we're going to go to Tiny House builders.com tinyhousebuilding.com they're number two on the facebook list great we're going to come and see you i invite every tiny home builder to my factory it looks like crap we got stuff everywhere we got stuff all over the place come on in cindy come on in cindy <laughs> dropped off the keys um we got stuff looks like a disaster out here right we're building i've got five people i went on to where was it 
one of the one of this now, and they have three people on their staff. I got five people behind the scenes before it even hits the hits the the four out here. Five people. So try to make this go on. And I had a customer say we had a lack of communication. I don't know, you know, sometimes, you know, we do have email glitches, all right? We do have problems, and but we are out here. I make a living. The only way that I buy groceries, the only way that I buy food that goes in this belly is building those tiny homes. I have no other source of income, all right? So I want to build a tiny home. My nature is to please. My nature is to give. Susan, we're building your house. You gave me $5,000 labor to build your entire house. I usually get twice or more of that on labor. And I wanted to help you. And I'm glad we're helping you. And I'm glad it's going that way and we're getting it to you. I thank, I thank you for your business and for the opportunity to doing that for you. We built a 30, uh, what, a 24-hour a, um, a, uh, bill. I got $5,000 of my own money in it. We auctioned it off, got $30,000 for the house, and every, every $30,000 that $1,000 went straight to that disabled vet. I got $5,000 in that. I paid $8,000 for a camera crew to come in here and film us during our first workshop. It may pay off because HGT, uh, HGTV and DIY said they might want to look at it, and they're thinking about giving me a holler back next week, and they may do come out and do another episode. You know where that goes. I don't know how that works. It's a long shot. I don't care to be on TV. What I care about is... You guys building tiny homes. That's my living. That's what I do. If I can do it better, we try every day to do better and better and better in what we do. Because of these tiny home prices, because of my prices at $25,000, believe it or not, I don't know why, but I feel like um, it's, it's uh, I want to give you a deal. And, and in back, I want to be um, great. I want you to be grateful. Isn't that weird? How can I, how can I want you to be grateful? You're giving me $25,000. Go somewhere else and try to find somebody who can build your house for 25 grand. Go somewhere else. Look here. Our, uh, I got, um, I'm still at 30 foot long. Our custom home was at 54,850. 30 feet. Tumbleweeds at 62, 26, 20 and 26 foot long. Their base price is 63,000. I'm at 54,850 for a 30 foot home. I'll build them 9 foot, 10 foot, 11 foot, 12 foot, 11, 13 foot, 14 foot wide. I'll make them as long as you want. I got a Hobbit outhouse out here going to Maine. It's 12 by 36. This Hobbit right here, what is it? A 20, 20 foot Hobbit house, right? Workshop workshop price, 27.9. If it was custom, it was 36. And it's got a round roof, round windows, round eaves. Heirloom, build that. Um, who is it? Who's the dude on the air? Uh, who's the one on the, they just signed his contract with HGTV. What is it? Titan. Titan, Titan, Titan. Come build that, Titan. Come build that. Build your Murphy bed. It has a desk underneath it or something like that. Build this right here and take it to Wicosa Hotel. You know, that's, I guess what I'm getting at is that I will beat anybody's price and I'll beat anybody's quality. If you want, again, if you want a, a more expensive home. If they call it a high-end home, what's high-end? I just looked on heirlooms. Heirlooms, they got barn wood for a vanity. They got barn wood shelves. It looks chic, like the guy in Nashville. Oh, yeah, what's his name? Go, You guys, go go look at all these guys. Um, Long-haired guy, real pretty girl, said he was good-looking, dude. Um, uh, New Frontier, tiny homes. $95,000, got a garage door, it rolls up. Awesome-looking house. It's still for sale, I guess. I don't know. Come over and see me, guy. Come over and see me. We want to see what you can do and what we can do. I invite all incredible... I invite all the builders. We should have a summit where all the builders get together. Well, let's all talk. Well, come on. We can meet right here. We'll put you up in our bunk room. All the builders. I'm just... I'm just getting a little irate at these guys right here. When you buy a tiny house from me, I'm giving you these prices right here. $25,000. An 18-foot is $828. 750. A 20-footer, 32.5. 22-foot, 36.250. I am not hiding anything from you guys. You want a house from me? Here it is. I sound like, oh, there goes my TV. I must have tilted it. You know what? We got, I'm not hiding nothing. I tell you what it is. I tell you what it is. I say, I say this is my price. I'm not hiding nothing from you. You want a staircase? It's a thousand bucks. Why is the staircase a thousand dollars, Randy? Well, because I got three sheets of plywood that's probably 50 bucks a piece. I got a man that takes two days to build it. He's $150 a day, right? And then I've got uh, the stair treads I got to put in. Then I got the hinges, the doors, the, the drawers in it, the paint and the staining and putting it in. 
I may make a hundred bucks, two hundred dollars off of that. Then we got rent, then we got overhead, and I don't think anybody's griping about that. But I'm telling you how much they cost. If you want a double tier roof like the one over here, 24 footer, it went from a 12 foot to a shed dormer. A girl called me last, uh, I don't know, last year. And she said, Tumbleweed charges them 28, 25, 3,500 bucks for a shed dormer. I don't charge you nothing because I'm a carpenter. To go from a 12 foot to a shed roof, what's the difference? Doesn't mean nothing to me. I just cut my saw a little different and go. You know, we build the house and we frame it in in two days. Done. Done, dried up, ready to wire and plumb. Why? Because, I guess because I push everybody like I'm talking. I don't know. Anyway, thank you for tuning in. I'm happy. I'm really happy. And, and I just want you guys to go on our website and check this out. You guys from New York, L.A., San Francisco, you guys down there in the, in the swamps of Louisiana, up in, up in uh, Michigan, all this right here. Go to our website. If you want a tiny house, I'm the place to go. You know what? I have Lean On Me Financing. I have a beautiful lady in Northern California that just is my first lean on me financing. She's, a, I don't know how old, her, how old she is, it doesn't matter. But she ended up working three jobs and she wants a lean on me financing. So you know what? You give me half down, I finance the other half. I'm not going to Upper Valley Tiny Home where they got investors that says, hey, you can finance 20 homes a year because we're going to finance them with $2,000 down. I'm not doing that. Randy Jones is financing them. Randy Jones right here. So I'm giving you, you're giving me... What, $12,500? Is that right? No, $24,000? I'm going to build the other $12,500 and I'm going to send you a house. And you're going to send me a, a, um, a check. The check is I'll finance it for two years. I may not be alive three years from now, so I'm doing it two years. We got to get it done, right? The payments on that's going to be what? $500 bucks a month? It's, it's, it's divided by $24,000. Done. That's it. So we have collateral. You want to give me something? Coach, so if you don't pay me, and I, I just lose out. But if you don't pay, guy, you don't pay these big, uh, not Geico, these big banks, what do they do? You know, they got a billion other people. I'm a small guy because you know what I'd want to do? I want to help you get into a tiny house. Now, I'm not doing it for free. I got to make some money. So if you guys really come through on your payments, I'm going to get paid. But why am I stretching it out there? Why am I doing that? I could reduce everything, build one or two a month, and that's it. But I, you know what? I want to build a company. I got guys out here that enjoy what they're doing, and I see. I, you know what it is? I guess I just believe in America. I believe that most people out here are absolutely honest, and most people will. Even though I have delivered a house, and they owe me $6,000, and they won't pay me. They just say, quit texting me. I don't want to pay it. I never had a house. That's a local house right here, local in Tennessee, that they, I figured I would get my money when I delivered it. And they said, stay away, don't call us no more. Okay, they don't call me no more. What do I do? You know, I'm not going to get in a lawyer and I'm not going to go, I'm not going to run into the courts. I got took for six grand. Done. The way it is. I'm not going, I'm rocking on. I'm leaving and I'm rocking on with my life. If that's all I'm going to cry about, I might as well quit now if that's going to make me stumble. It's not, they didn't even put a bump in my road. It's not because I got money either. It's because... That's the way I got to live, you know. These homes here, when I get there and I deliver them, I want you happy. When I first started my business, if I pull up in that truck and I pull up and you walk in that house and you don't like that house, you get your money back. Back then, I pulled up. You didn't give me any money. I built it out of my pocket. And if you didn't like it, I'll just head back home with it. I don't care because I want you happy. My biggest thing is about relationships with people. Go to my go go to Brothers Cove and call BrothersCove.com. Call the people that own there that I built that resort, and you find out the relationship that I had with them. Do it. You know what? Yeah, I've been in every aspects of these businesses. I am not perfect. Your home will not be perfect. A lot of times they're not perfect. You know what? But we're learning and we're doing, and you know I think we do a beautiful job. Them heirloom tiny homes are not perfect. Nobody's home's perfect. Nobody's. But by God, I want you to be happy. You know. So I'm standing behind this. I'm giving you the truth of what I am, who I am, and what's going on. It bothers me more for you not to be happy. If I have a customer already that calls up and says that we have a poor lack of communication and because they're complaining already, they're already complaining before the, the house, before the contract is even drawn up, all right? I'm sorry, we can't build for everybody out here. I can't. I'd love to. I'll bend over backwards for you. I will do all that I can. But you know what? I'm telling you, 
It's not about the money. If it was about the money, I'd jack my prices up more, right? Right? I'd hire me maybe a camera crew to come out here and film my home so they look like heirlooms and get more, more publicity, however I got to do. I'm not. I'm bare bones wholesale in this leaky building out here. All right, but I'm not going to build. I can't build for everybody. My thing is about relationships. I want you to be grateful for what we're doing, and I'm grateful for your business. You know, I want you to be nice. I want you to be kind. I want, and I want to be nice and kind to you. Okay, that's what I want to be. And so when we build a home, we will bend over backwards. And if you are not happy, I guarantee you, you will, you will get it refunded, or I'll fix it, or whatever it is, whatever it is. And we, we've got five people now. I used to do all that. All over the five people was just me, all right? So now we answer your emails. One person answers your emails. One person will contact you. One person will draw those will draw those plans. One person will do inventory and order everything you have. And then the other person will do quality control when the, when the building's done. Five people that's not even involved in throwing a hammer or a screwdriver out here, you know? And then including the crew, what do we got? Eight or 10 people? All right, that are building and framing, eight to 12, 14 people we have at times building and framing out here, plus my high school guys is another four. So that's, that, that's what I'm bringing to you guys. If you would like for us to build you a tiny home, here it is. Look on my website, look on what we're filming, what we bring to you, come and visit, dissect what we do, talk to people, talk to anybody that I build for, anybody. I had a girl tonight, she texted me, Laura, down in Texas, text me. She said, my plug's not working in my house. I don't know why. Was it working when it left here? Yeah, but now it doesn't. You know what I'm doing? I'm going to fix that plug. I don't know why it's not working. I had no idea, but I'm going to fix it. I called an electrician. He's going to look at it. Things happen. It doesn't bother me. I want to warrant to these homes. I had a lady, like I said, had the home 16 months. She had problems. It was water coming in a window. I went and fixed it. 16 months. What do you do? You want to do that? You think I'm going to get rich doing that? You think I'm going to be a corporate America being that way? No, I'm not. But you know what? I'm in the American dream. and I probably shouldn't be in business because I just keep giving. And it's hard for me not to just do everything I possibly can to make you perfectly happy. And that's going to be hard to do. But when we start out of the shoot unhappy, I can't go there. I just can't. So if you're not happy, we're going to stop and reevaluate things. Okay? So maybe that's a select few. You know, I'm not in this thing scared that I'm going to go broke. I am never scared of going broke. I will have food in my belly till I'm 95 or lay over in a ditch somewhere. Okay, I'm not scared about that. So I want, my biggest thing is I want to do a good product and I want to have a good relationship. I'm all about relationship, 100%. Okay, so I don't know why I'm saying all this stuff. Um, hey, believe me or not, I'm a, as you guys, anybody that's been following me at all, I'm, I'm really... Uh, I'm who I am, and I don't hide behind anything. You know, this is this is who I am. You come here, you will meet Randy Jones. You'll experience me, and you'll see happy, fun, going, and serious stuff too. And it's serious because I'm dealing with people's lives and dealing with their money, and it means everything to me when you bring a deposit to me. When we build a house for you, it's everything that I have, everything that I can muster, the energy inside me to bring you a good product. That's it, hands down, okay? So I could be fake and say, hey, we build the finest homes in the United States. We build this, we build that, and brag, 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 and we never make a mistake, and it's not right. It's not right. And neither of those guys, they're not telling you it's not right because they make mistakes. I've been in the construction business 30-some years now, and every single project has problems, every single one of them. There's something wrong with them. But I always strive every day to be perfect. I swear I do. It's not a sales pitch. It's my... It's just who I am, okay? So, um, I wanted to get over to my, oh, uh, one thing, and this, this might be boring, you guys can throw it off. They said, hey, we're not getting enough hits on YouTube because my the, the shows are too long. I don't know, I'm just telling you because then people tell me I don't say enough, you know, and there's more stuff to talk about. But a buddy of mine, Todd Quattro out of Detroit, has got a construction company called Top Quattro Construction. And uh, Noah, N-O-A-H, is a certification and RBIA is a certification for tiny homes. Well, also is RBAH. We own that name, Recreational Vehicle and Alternative Housing. That's our certification that we have. It is their certification. NOAA, NOAA has inspectors. They're not licensed engineers, licensed contractors, licensed um, 
architects, structural engineers. They are inspectors that have passed the test. They see your video via a, a video and they look at it and they charge a homeowner $2,000 for a certification. Our certifications are for our company, not for the public. We are certified. Todd Quattro has put together this insignia and he is gonna be our third party inspector. He is an engineer. His company has got a structural engineer. And we're also going through fire marshals, all right? And all that will be composited in a professional booklet that you will receive on every single house when we sell these homes, okay? It'll have stress loads. It'll have calculations of how much snow wind, snow load you can have on it, how much cross, um, cross winds it'll, it'll adhere to. And if, and if you want anything alternatively, if you want to build it out of metal or if you want to build it out of one by fours or even toothpicks or straw, we'll still build it. And what he'll do is he'll do calculations and say, hey, it's this strong. This is how big it will be. This is what it will hold. And we can do calculations. We sold the house. It's going to be 40 by 12, 12 by 40. And it's going to be steel I-beams, not steel construction like studs, steel I-beams that will be exposed with glass all the way around it and super modern. And I'm really pumped about building this thing. So it's fun to do that. He's going to be a part of that structural engineering on that. RVAH. Now, I'm going to try to lobby all these insurance companies throughout the United States and say, hey, we are right there with RVIA. We are right there with NOAA. We are right there with them. And we're going to say, hey, we are a third-party instructor um, inspector that we have our insignia on every home that we do. Okay? Hearst Trailers. We buy Hearst Trailers. Hearst Trailers doesn't give me a deal. He gives everybody a deal. You call Hearst Trailers in Washburn, Tennessee, look it up on the internet, buy a, buy a trailer. Tell them you want the same trailers I buy. Tell them you want a 16-footer for you know, like incredible tiny homes. He'll sell it to you what I paid for it. Done. That's how we do it. Okay? I, a 16-foot trailer, I think, with drop axles, jacks, everything's $3,200. So what I paid for a trailer. So he'll get you the same price. I'm here because I know I can build a house faster and quicker than you can at home. You know, because we're professionals and we know what we do and we know how to do it. And I don't know anybody can work harder and faster than us, you know, and that's just the way we'd sell it. And I'm glad, I'm proud of that. Um, so we got our certification, we have a workshop. Sunday, Brent and Seth will be here. Hi to you guys. I'm Brandy. not Brent, I'm sorry. <laughs> Brandy, Brandy and Seth will be here and uh, finishing up their Hobbit. They're gonna go to Colorado right after that. And then um, we got Taryn coming in Tuesday. She'll be here a few days, go to Nashville for a break, and then she's coming back for a full-blown week, bring her whole team to finish a 24-footer that we got here for. And so it's exciting, you know. We've got a, um, a, um, a fifth wheel that's coming in here. We got a 20, 10 by 20 foot, another Hobbit house. We got a 28 foot, and we've also ordered another 24 footer. We've got it. So it's this is all going on right now here at Incredible Tiny Homes. All right. So thank you for tuning in. Um, go to YouTube if you guys want. We got 8,400 people members um, that are, have subscribed to YouTube. 8,400, and I said if we got 100,000, we would we would uh, give a house away. Apparently, we're not going to get 100,000. So I don't know. I guess we're not doing something right. I don't know. We're I think we're doing. Melissa does all of our social media. Done a great job. Um, we're we're selling homes, and that's how I look at it. We went from four emails to 40 emails a day. Um, we're getting a lot of people calling and if we're not big on YouTube, that's okay. I just thought it'd be something that, you know, they say if you got a lot of views on YouTube, you start making some money. I thought it'd help us with our rent, but apparently it's not going to, and that's all right. It's just something we tried. If I ever stopped because I, um, I was scared of not trying, I'd stay in a bed. Every day I make a mistake. Every single day I make a mistake. And when I wake up out of the bed, I know it's happening. I know it's going to happen, but I still get up and I still keep going, right? It's just the way it is. And since I've accepted that, and every day is going to be a struggle, some more than others, I embrace it. Now it's just a challenge. I'm, I'm like looking forward to seeing what mistake am I going to make today, you know? And I can see how I can repair it. These guys out here, there's all kinds of things. Like Susan O's house, the guy that framed it, the walls are out. So we're hanging these cabinets on there. The top cabinet fits, the bottom cabinet don't. We gotta tweak all this stuff. We gotta make it work. And Susan, it looks awesome. We'll show it to you tomorrow night. Man is gonna decorate it all up. We're gonna, well, you know what? 
We're, we're going to decorate it up and show you what it looks like with our decorations in it. You're going to love it. We're going to ship it to you, and hopefully you'll have a good time in your new home. I hope we did the best we could for the money that you gave us to do it. And so, you know, $5,000 of labor, and we did every single thing. I did not slack in any amount of any energy that I put in that. Okay, it cost me five more thousand dollars and I'm glad I did it for you because I think for some reason, I don't know, but somewhere in the future, some way that you're going to benefit and it's just going to bless, it's just going to help whatever. I, I don't know how that happens, but it, I know when you give, I'm not looking to give back. I don't, I don't believe that, you know, I don't believe that you give and you receive. I don't do that. I don't do that at all. You know, uh, my dad told me one thing. He said, there's only one, there's only one kind of, there's, there's no such thing as luck. It's just good or bad, good or bad management. That's how I see it. I don't do it for karma. I don't do it for nothing. I do it because they're right here. That's why I do it. And yeah, it's, it's cost me bunches of money. Bunches, you know, but it's the way it is. Um, there I am. You got my soul on me. That's how, that's who I am. Uh, you know, I, I'm going to tell you just a quick secret. You guys can tune off if you like. I don't know how long I've been, how long have I been on. 30 minutes, 32 minutes? 25. 25? Uh -huh. 25. I got a couple minutes because usually I rattle on for 47 minutes. Hey, this is the deal. I think this will explain a little bit of, uh, of Randy Jones and the company. Okay? Uh, when I was a little guy growing up, and Amanda knows all this whole story, but... Um, when I was a little guy growing up, I was a normal little kid, little guy running around, loved to play and dirt and army guys, da 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 da, army guys and all that stuff. And then played sports, wasn't no good in sports, but I played, had a good time. And then I, I got an injury when I was in eighth grade and I broke my left hand, okay? Broke my left hand and I went home and I was sledding down in the wintertime and I went back and I couldn't play sports anymore. And uh, so uh, a boy in his school, he, Broke his left hand, and we called them burnouts back then. Bless his heart, I look back at him, and, and I hope he's doing good. But he was snorting cocaine right on the workbench, right on the workbench. And, man, it freaked me out. I was 13 years old. He broke his left hand. I broke my left hand, and it just freaked me out. And I'm like, oh, my God. You know, I want to be just like this kid. And drugs just was just bad. We, they'd sell quaaludes and all these other, right during the lunch period, dollar rolls and if guys are watching back home I don't know you guys remember that back in Simpson Junior High School you know in Flat Rock Michigan that was a podunk little town I wasn't even in Detroit or any kind of big city freaked me out what did I do I started getting anxiety not anxiety I wouldn't shake and couldn't breathe it was just like I saw I remember sitting I remember sitting I was sitting in the living room watching Flip Wilson and Fred uh, Sanford and all these shows with my folks and I'm sitting there and a voice come in my head if you go in the kitchen and you touch all the, touch all the cabinets you won't be a drug addict I said okay so I went in the kitchen and I touched all the cabinets and then when I, I sat back down I thought wow that's great it's all gone and then it said about 10 minutes later so go in there and touch them again and then another 10 minutes to go and touch them again and it was because every time you touch them you're not going to be a drug addict you know my folks argued a lot they still do Geez, they're 91 and 93, and they argue every single day. It bothered me when they argued. And so that was another reason. I thought, well, if I go in there and touch them, maybe they won't argue, you know? So I touched them and touched them. Finally, within three weeks, I was completely encompassed with traditional traditions and things that were happening to me. <clears throat> I would hold my breath until I almost passed out. At the same time, I'd be tapping my foot inside my boot, all right? I'd be tapping my foot, winking my eye, grunting, right? Tapping both toes, tapping this foot, and then all at the same time, 24-7 unless I was sleeping. Always, always, always. When I had a pencil, I'd take a pencil and I'd write my name. R, A, <coughs> and at the same time, I'm tapping my foot, I'm spitting in the floor, I'm at school in front of everybody, and just doing this. I would go to gym class, run, I'd get in the gym, Here's my combination, and I'm like, I want to open my combination. The voice would say, you can't touch that because you're, you're, you're going to be a drug addict or something bad's going to happen. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Everybody's getting dressed. Everybody's going out in the gym. <clears throat> I'm still standing there with my books in my hand, and I'm starting to cry because I want to go play ball with my buddies, and I can't go. I can't go. And what happens 45 minutes later? I'm still standing there looking at the locker, and they're coming back in from gym, and I still got my books in my hand. 
And I never made it to gym class. And I'm standing in the locker room. Now everybody's getting showers. And I'm still not. And then the bell rings and I'm late for my next class. And I run to my next class. And I forgot to go to the bathroom. So now I'm sitting in the bathroom. I'm sitting in the class. And I've got to go to the bathroom really bad. And I can't go. Because class started. And it was every day, every second of my day, every life, every moment was consumed with that. And you know what? Even at lunch, I go to lunch and I have a bag of lunch and I sit it down with a peanut butter jelly sandwich, you know? And they said, you can't open that bag until you touch it three times. And it was three more times and three more times and three more times and three more times. And I'm holding my breath and I'm winking my toe and I'm winking my eye. I'm spitting on the floor and I'm grunting because, oh, I got to do all this stuff. If I don't do it, bad stuff will happen. But I kept doing it, kept doing it, and I couldn't stop. So what happened? I went for a year and a half, I got hospitalized because I wasn't eating. I wasn't, well, I, I got a truant's officer, came to my house. I didn't want to go to school. I'm just a little guy. At, at 15 years old, I went to 15 years old, and I was 105 pounds going into the 10th grade. You know? So what happens? <clears throat> Summer vacation comes, I'm going into the ninth, back then, 10th grade goes into high school. So what happens? Only place I didn't have to do this stuff was I went to church. My family never went to church. I went by myself. Pastor used to honk his horn and come and get me. You know what? I could have went to any church, but this guy wanted me. He just liked me. He was an older gentleman and he cared about me. So it was better. I just went. So what happened is, so when I, when I went to church, I didn't do nothing. I could walk. I didn't have to do anything. I don't know why. It just happened. So what happened is my ninth grade year, I'm grunting, spitting, 105 pounds, just got out of the hospital, hospitalized. My mom and dad are just terrible because they thought their kid's a looney tune. I can't go to school. I can't work. I can't think. I can't do nothing. I can't. I'm totally incapacitated. It takes me five hours to get up and go to school in the morning. I get up at, I get up at 3, 4 o'clock in the morning to be to school at 9. I go to church. And I've been going there all my life. I knock on the door because I was late going to church. The girls opened the door and I've been going there almost all my life. They want to know who I was. They said, welcome. I was a nobody. So I go in and I sit down. <laughs> After Sunday school, the little girl said, hey, would you stay for the preaching service? Because, you know, it's summer vacation. You got nothing to do. And I said, yeah, let me call my dad. And my dad pulled up in the 71 bottom bill, the front end bash in it. And he said, hey, I said, dad, I'm going to stay another hour. He said, no problem. I thought, well, I got one more, one more hour just doing nothing. I don't have to do my rituals. And I'm talking, I'm wasted. Hair's all over the side, zits all over my face. So I go in there and I sit down in the preacher. And I don't know what he preached about. I don't know nothing. All I know is that girl liked me. Not as a boyfriend, girlfriend at all. Because she just liked me. She was a friend. And I didn't know who she was. She put her arm around me and she talked to all the friends and made me feel I didn't have one friend during that whole period of time in my life. It was almost two years, two years. It was like... Might as well put me in that room and shut the door, turn off the lights and say goodbye to me. Come and get me in two years. She had enough love in her heart to put her arm around a kid that was dying. And I don't know what happened. To this day, I don't know what happened. But I went home, jumped in that, bunch, that 71 Bonneville with my dad. And I went to the house, a little old bitty 900 square foot house in Flat Rock, Michigan. And when I walked in the room... I just took off my church clothes, which I couldn't. It would take me four hours to get undressed. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Constant for hours. And finally, just take off my shirt because my mom would beat on the door. Son, what are you doing in there for three hours? I'm just trying to take one button off my shirt. Well, that day it didn't happen. I just took it off. Took it off. Took it off. And I didn't know what was going on. Totally took them off. Put on, back then we used to play clothes. I put on a different set of clothes, and I remember hitting the back door, and I remember running out in the field as fast and as hard as I can, and I had my arms up in the sky, and I said, I'm free, I'm free, I'm free again. And from that day on, I've never had another OCD experience ever. It was gone, completely, 100% gone. That summer, I gained 32 pounds. I gained. There, I, I joined every sport known to man. I joined every club known to man. I asked every girl out from college to grade school. Not grade school. They had to be older in high school. But I was came alive. I came alive. And I wanted to live. And I don't know if that's why I want to live now every day of my life that I come in this world. And every day I wake up, I'm so glad to be alive. I'm glad that I can see the sunshine. I don't know why I wake up every day and I'm glad that my eyes can function and I can see pretty people and I can see pretty things in that world 
I'm glad that my back's not snapped. I'm glad I'm not in the hospital with cancer. I'm, not, I'm, I'm glad I don't have MS or a crippling disease. I'm glad I don't have them things. And God forbid people that do. And my heart just goes out to them. But I am so glad every single day you guys don't understand it. I'm so glad. And that's why when I build these tiny homes, it means to me to me when I build you a house. It's not about the money. I'm still in this warehouse sleeping. None of us out here are rich. We're building homes. That's it. We're building homes. For me to get rich in the tiny home business is just a fluke. It's just a fluke if it ever does. That's not my main thing. I've been through so much. I've lost a lot of money. I've lost a lot of friends. I've lost a family. I've lost all kinds of stuff. And you know what? What means the most is having a dream and having a reason to get out of bed because I know what it's like not to want to get out of the bed. I know what it's like to be locked in that room right there for two years and not having one person check on you. Okay? So when you buy a home from me, you're not buying just a home. You're buying that. You're buying that energy in that home. You're buying that dream in that home. And I'm spreading that amongst these men here. All these men have got past just like you do. We all look in the mirror and think we're ugly. We all look in the mirror and think we're fat. We all look in the mirror, we're getting old. We all look in the mirror, we all say us, but don't we do that. What's going to make that go away? Friends, a dream, and you don't think about it. Because we're all in this together. And the minute you try to you try to Jew me out of money, is the minute I'm going to get mad. You know, and the minute that you're going to take something for me that I did for you and I did all I can for you and you're going to owe me $6,000, man, I'm going to get mad. But you know what? I'm not going to go after you. And it's not just that one. If you call up and you're going to be angry with me, don't do it. Everybody I got here is trying their best to do you a good job, and we're not perfect. But please be patient with us, okay? Be, be patient with who we are, and, 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 and I'll do everything I can in my might to give you. If, if there's something that you didn't hear back from us, it's because we forgot and it wasn't intentional. Things happen. I am not an electronic guru, but I know how to get on YouTube. I know how to check my email. I know how to text, okay? I'm not stupid about it, and I want to learn more if I had more time. The only reason I don't have it is because I'm working physically with my hands to build a life, and that's the life I chose, okay? I hope you enjoyed that story. I hope you uh, it, I hope it inspired somebody to realize that this isn't a perfect life, and I know nobody is. And we're all in this together, okay? And I truly, truly, truly believe that. It's not about money. I hope whatever this business stops, tiny homes may not only be a fad. The people, the 50-some people that I've built for, I hope they'll always be my friend. And I hope I can always help them and help them and I always look them in the eye and never be ashamed of anything I've ever done. Okay, so thank you for tuning in. I'm sorry, maybe it felt like a serious moment tonight. Um, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know if it's right or wrong. I love to have fun. I was class clown in my senior, my senior class. I was class clown. I love to have fun. Anybody likes to laugh, it'd be me. But sometimes, uh, sometimes I guess we got to talk about things that, that we need to talk about. So uh, thank you for your business, everybody. Thank you for, for backing me up. All everybody that works here, it's not just me. You're, you're loving on everybody when you give us a deposit, okay? So, uh, thumbs up. I'm going to send you a video every single day from now on. A short one during the day, just to let you guys always know what's going on. I'm going to show you the homes. I'm going to start showing you the guys V-grooving inside and spray foaming. And this over and over and over, these things that you guys will see that, I'm, that these guys are not showing you. It's okay that they don't show you, but I just feel like I want to show you because if I'm building a home or I'm buying a home, it'd really be, no, it'd really be cool to know how they're all put together, right? I even show you prices. I'll show you what I got in them. I'll show you what I'm making. I, whatever you want to do, okay? Thank you so much. God bless you. Have a great night. It's Friday night. Enjoy your weekend. We're going to Peggy. Maybe we'll be on face, uh, Facebook maybe tomorrow night uh, delivering this house and setting it up. And you guys get to meet Peggy and her man. Okay? Peggy and Bill, right? I think it's Bill. Mm -hmm. So we'll meet them tomorrow. And I'll, I'll come on and show you all. What such a venue. And I really respect the fact that I have this time on Facebook Live because it is serious. Because I don't want to damage anybody's lives or I don't want to influence them wrong. So I, I try not and to say anything that's going to be bad. Okay, so I think there's a responsibility for all of us on Facebook or any time we, time we do any kind of live work. So I want to say hi, hi to my boys, um, Carson in Nashville, Bryce out here working. 
I love you and um, thanks for everything you guys. Have a good night. See ya. Incredible Tiny Homes.